Hey everybody, this is Sho, and thank you for checking out the video. So, with Caligula 2 getting its Western release uh, within the next week or so, I was actually thinking about doing a bit of a, a gameplay walkthrough here that uh, will cover a lot of the basics of the game that we discussed already in the review I released earlier in the week. So you should be seeing a link up right now if you uh, haven't checked it out already. Uh, if you want the shorter, concise version, yeah, do be sure to check that out. This uh, gameplay walkthrough is going to go a lot more in-depth into some of the systems, and we're going to see it working firsthand with my commentary behind. And uh, once we go through, hopefully, the entire first dungeon, then I'm also going to do a little extra, taking a look at the kind of school life aspect uh, with the causality link and how that functions, which comes accessible after the first uh, dungeon, which is good. Uh, just going to make a few quick adjustments here, lower the BGM and sound effects a bit there, just so we can hear better. I hope there isn't much uh, humming behind. I've, uh, I've tried to adjust my audio settings for my, my, my unit here, so it should be good. Anyway, let's take a look. Uh, we're going to take a look at normal mode, and I'm going to be skipping a lot of the cutscenes uh, in the beginning here. This is a JRPG first and foremost, right? So there are buckets of cutscenes. I, I feel like there's at least a good 30 minutes of opening cutscenes before you even get to your first battle. So uh, I need to, I'm going to skip as much as I possibly can. Uh, she just asked me for my last name. So, oh, do, 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 do. let's go for, huh, this one. Okay. Uh, if you are in the audience, let me know if you uh, if you read this. So you can catch the reference for the name. This is my first name. Oops. Let me see. Here we go. All right. If you catch the reference, let me know in the comments below. Okay. So we got the name in. Yes, this is my name. Sure. Uh, and as for what I look like. Um, we want to be a boy or a girl. I guess if we're going to follow the reference, maybe we're going to be a guy. All right. Uh, here we go. This is the, the player character for Caligula 2. If you choose the male variant. Yeah, a little bit more. This is uh, Regret. She's one of the main characters here. I don't want to go too much into the story, as uh, I want you guys to, to have a good idea on checking out yourself. But basically, she's just introducing us to the world and letting us know that we can uh, enjoy our new life in Redo, which is the world's name. Uh, those cuts, those little tutorials there were just letting me know where objectives are on the mini-map. So we're going to head to our next objective here. And I think from this point we can start skipping some cutscenes. Uh, again, I don't want to go through the cutscenes. I want to keep this more of a gameplay-based uh, walkthrough. As I mentioned before, this game is heavy on the cutscenes. At least a solid 30 minutes or longer. So, I hope I can skip through a good chunk of this here. Uh, this is the school that we go to. So you can see all the nice little sections there, which is pretty cool. I guess I can't skip these, unfortunately. So uh, just to talk a bit about the game as we're going through the opening cutscenes here. Um, this is the sequel to the original Caligula effect that came out, uh, I think originally on the PS4 and Vita back in 2017. I remember playing it on the Vita at that time. I think it was digital only in the West. And uh, yeah, it was a fun game. I, I didn't. I enjoyed the Persona vibes for it, but yeah, just a, a lot of systems felt that they were just a little bit shallow. Um, if you guys actually played the original one, then you would remember that everyone has their turn at one time. You all queue up, you load up all your skills, and then you just let it rip. And it wasn't. Um, nah, I, I I found myself just spamming the same stuff over and over and over again, and. You can basically get through the whole game just doing that. So I wasn't really too 
I, 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 I kind of lost interest in terms of the story and the gameplay just came really repetitive for me. So I, the, I went through it and I ended up enjoying it for the most part. For me, it was more or less just the character interactions that really made the, the game really worth it. And I personally enjoyed the music as well, which you can probably hear in the background right now a bit. Uh, as I mentioned in the review, the overall uh, music of the game has gotten much better, at least in my opinion. It, everything feels a lot more refined. And uh, oh yeah, let me drop it in now before I forget. If you haven't already, please be sure to subscribe to the channel uh, so you can get the newest updates on the videos that come out. Uh, and if you enjoy the content, please leave a like and give me some comments as well. I already mentioned commenting who you think the character's name references to. And uh, yeah, should be fun. All right, so a little bit more cutscenes. Regret sees something, something's flying through the air. It's causing a bunch of distortion. Uh, obviously, a, a direct reference to the first Caligula effect, with uh, obviously this being a digital world that we live in. But again, I'm not going to go too much into it. Finally, we can jump through some of the cutscenes here. This is when the story really kicks in. Okay. The Black Man. That's what they refer to him in this is Blackamon. All right. So now we're, uh, we're, after a few scenes, we're basically back to us. We are sleeping in our classroom. And yeah, we're basically asked like, hey, what's going on here? And we could say, yeah, I was, uh, fell asleep or man, there was something weird in the sky. Mm, let's say it was, hey, some weird in the sky. Okay, we'll just skip this a bit more. Uh, and that person is actually working with us now. We'll be introduced to her, I think, as the school government prez. So she kind of helps us match our school life. Yeah, really sorry, I was kind of late today. And we have a choice of where we can kind of go, so we can just kind of hop right into it here. Uh, again, there's a pretty heavy amount of story that goes on in this section now. I'll Definitely enough for maybe like one or two videos uh, without commentary. But I, again, I want to focus just on the gameplay for everyone here. So uh, if everyone is interested in an actual full playthrough, then yeah, I can obviously repost a start over going into a more depth. The opening section here also allows you to talk or meet some of your future characters. So there's a, a nice kind of mix of them. Uh, as we'll see once we get into the actual gameplay section as more characters join the party you gain access to more sort of job roles and, and skills which work really well all right so yeah um some things have happened already we've left the school and catching into a train right now this is kind of the the opening introductions to key who i discussed earlier in the review video and i'm gonna reference that a lot i guess uh, basically, Key is kind of like our partner for this. She's able to to help us return home based upon uh, the plot points that happen during this section. So, yeah, not too much to, to talk about in terms of the, the story. Again, I don't want to get too heavy into it. Uh, Cause I wanted you guys to check it out yourself. And I do hope I can skip this a bit more. But it's kind of good, uh, good ambience to it, which is nice. Hello, human. My name is Key. All right, here we go. All right, and uh, for this part, we kind of do a little bit of running around the school real quick. It's all cutscene based. Basically what's happening here, as you'll get to see, is um, reality is sort of warping. Our character is not really fully cognizant that they're in a virtual world. Uh, because the way that the lore works with how these systems work in the game, basically um, we're not fully cognizant, so to speak. And early on the game kind of establishes like what the world is, why we're not cognizant. Key's role in that. And coincidentally, Mew's role, if you remember Mew from the first game. For anyone coming back from either the original release or from Overdose. 
which is a shame because over this there was so much opportunity for them to fix those systems but at least here in Caligula 2 they fix these systems for the most part which is great so I, so let's, uh, this is actually a game I'm really enjoying going through despite minor flaws here or there all right yep let's just go through here all right yeah no. Uh, from what I've seen so far, the options don't have too much of an impact early on, but there are some sort of, um, I think, options you can take later on that work with sort of social links you have. Uh, if anyone remembers character episodes from the first game, they've basically come back again. And you do have options, I think, in later character episodes that allow for you to progress to the character episode uh, more efficiently. Okay, right here we're starting to, to break up. What's going on? I'm losing my reality. Oh no, oh my gosh. You have to play the full game to figure out what's really going on here or ask me to upload more later. And yep, so key pops out, we morph, and it's time to battle. All right, so this is the tutorial battle in the opening of the game that goes through everything. I'm basically just going to cover everything myself so we won't have to worry too much about this. Yep, lots of stuff going on here. Okay. So basically, um, all battles work in this way. It opens up in a great way. Uh, you have Catharsis Effect, which is basically your main attacks. You have Support Skills, which are basically kind of magics. Uh, you have Actions, which are not attacks, but they're more positional things. For example here, um, the Dash one here allows me to change my actual movement on the board. The uh, Soul Charge is something we'll get to in just one second. Then, of course, we have uh, defending, and then we have escaping, and then finally items at the end here. Uh, if you also see at the top left corner, you see that thing bouncing back and forth. Uh, that's an auto battle system where you can basically set your NPCs, not yourself, but your NPCs, to select certain options and modes so they can fight. Depending on it, they'll use more skills, they'll use less skills, they'll be more conservative, things like that. But anyway, uh, let's attack. We got to attack to move forward. So we have two different attacks here. Uh, and let's just pick this one for one. Oh, you may also notice that to the side there's a number. That number is the amount of SP or spirit points, soul points that's used to do the attack. Also at the bottom you'll see that the attack's power, number of hits, uh, and overall uh, damage ability is set there. So we select an attack, uh, we select the target, and then our forecasting system comes in here. So as we can see, we can see what's going to be happening within the next like 30 or some 60 some seconds. Okay, and as you can see, we can do some damage, but we're going to take some hits. Now, what we want to do is we want to be able to exploit the enemy's attack styles. Now, if we, if you saw here, the enemy on the right is thrusting, an enemy in the center is shooting. If you check on the left side here, You'll notice that there are two separate uh, kind of icons. This one looks like a guy's like laying down. This one looks like there's like a like a bullet, kind of a what's it like a uh, crosshair. That's it, a crosshair with like an attack. Crosshairs represent shooting. So if you see right here on the screen, there it says shooting with a crosshair. If we were to wait until after that is already active. So for instance, right around now, that causes an instant counter. So let's do that. So we're gonna wait a little bit, it'll charge up, and then bam. We stop their attack, and coincidentally, since this game works a lot on movement and positionals, we were actually able to dodge the thrust from the other target. All right. Now, we could try something very similar again. Another shooting happens here, and this time I'm actually able to hit both of them and dodge, so this will end the battle for us. And there we go. Knock them both out, single shot. Then here, uh, basically this is your finish up, right? So you get a tech bonus depending on how well you do, plus you get the amount of, uh, see kind of the yen sign and then the stars above it. We'll get into that once it unlocks, but basically it's your spoils of war. All right. Now, this is where it brings up the other part. So over to the left, we have the voltage bar. 
the voltage bar allows key to be summoned. So what I would like to do here is demonstrate the full effect of how this works. So once again, I'm going to counter our opponent and dodge this here. And now I'm going to press the X button and then overclock happens. Music changes, which is fantastic. Uh, and this actually changes what's going on in terms of your status. As, key go as you go through the game and unlock more songs, each song actually causes something new to happen. I think this song increases attack. Uh, whereas the next one actually increases uh, defense. And as you can see here, my counter bar has been completely reset. So I have my turn immediately, and I can immediately follow up with this attack, nailing both of them and getting the instant win again. As you can see, the combo there is pretty good. We get a bit, bit of bonus XP for that, and we're set. Please note, though, that uh, as you noticed, the bar only had a little bit deducted. And we'll talk about this more when I when I do it in later battles. But the um, the bar will fully deplete once it's used. So if you're gonna use it a little bit, it's not like um, other games where the limit break bar will come back and you can like just fill it up from a certain point. It's gonna be a hundred percent reset to zero. So you're gonna have to keep that in mind depending on where you're at a dungeon, because keys, song, the overdrive really helps out. All right. So we just get introduced to our second character there. Uh, he's not going to actually help us at the moment. He's just kind of joining us uh, as a part of a plot. But his name is Gein. Uh, and he has a really interesting catharsis effect. So catharsis, uh, just to reiterate, catharsis effect. Wow, I can't say it right. Catharsis effect basically uh, is the main attack styles. This game has a lot of like psychological principles built into it which makes it, I guess you could say persona, but a little bit more psychological persona. <laughs> um, as, a, as an ex-student of, well, as a, as a graduate of psychology and neuroscience, I kind of appreciate the references. All right, so we got a few more cutscenes going on here. Um, again, I think if you guys want to see the cutscenes, yeah, I can post a, a full playthrough of this, but there is a lot of cutscenes that happen during this time. All right, so now we're in the dungeon space, which is good. All right, so as you can see, we're getting a bunch of things at the top left. Uh, hitting the L button will basically open this up. So these are just uh, notifications. So if we get a new song or tutorial, it will let us know. So it's gonna let us do that quite a bit. Obviously coming up to here, we have our beautiful save points, which is good. So we can set a save point here. Don't wanna save over my other files. Uh, and while we're here real quick, we're just going to open the menu. So uh, you have multiple menus. The status gauge will just list here uh, with that sort of stuff. Just giving character information. Next up is formation. Again, you can select party members and sub members when we have more. Equipment. Equipment's going to be spending a lot of time. Basically, this is the stigma system. So in the original game, there were things like, what was it, stigmas, past traumas and core beliefs, I think is what they called them. I don't know if they're gonna use the same sort of um, language, because everything is just referenced as stigma. It's just kind of like attacking item, like defensive item, uh, and then these kind of like accessory points. The key point though is the passive skill section here. Basically, the stigma, whatever's equipped on the stigmas can sometimes offer uh, stat bonuses as well as passive skills that can be learned. So you definitely want to master those skills and then equip them so you can kind of double up on certain points. Uh, of course, our item lists, none too big to look at there. Uh, the other sections in the middle will have unlocked when we beat the first dungeon, but here's key. So uh, there are key points you can get, which are, right now we have zero, but basically, you can choose the different types of songs from this menu, and from this menu, you can unlock extra bonuses that happen when overdrive occurs. So for example, this one here is one of the ones I highly suggest, which is SP save. Basically, when overdrive happens, uh, any SP that is used is like greatly re reduced, which is really good. Uh, same with this one, like this is like um, what is it, the risk factor. 
So basically, it allows for a wrist to gain more quickly. You also have access to like counter abilities uh, that just really help you out. So keeping your eyes on overdrive is a really good way to ensure you know you have what you need and unlocking those abilities as you need them depending on your playstyle and your character choice really helps and of course system we have config tutorials back to title uh, the game is really really substantial with their tutorials so you're always able to reference whatever you need to it's really really good now i'm going to try to move us up through the first section here for the first video so i don't want to spend too too long on this first video here uh, those are the what were they? the holder yes whole quarter bees so they're like these little crystals. If you press the A button on the switch, at least, you perform a kick motion. This is also kind of how you act. So you have access to these treasure chests as well. And right there, we got a certain stigma. So if we go into the equip menu, since that's a blue stigma, that basically is like an accessory of sorts. And this one allows us to have plus 11 to our attack, but that's it. So let's get that on our main character here and continue through. All right. Now we're going to just jump up here. Okay, another cutscene here. Yes, there's nobody in the station. Okay. Now, uh, an important part for knocking up these crystals, uh, as you've noticing, we're getting items for them. So these can be key points, these can be money, and they can also be just like general use recovery items and treasures that we can sell. You've also noticed that off to the uh, right side, whenever we knock into one, we actually allow us to get back our um, voltage gauge, which is really, really helpful. So with the voltage gauge, we are able to do some pretty good stuff. Again, summoning key into battle. Now, really quickly, we're just going to loop around here. Um, I've done this opening dungeon quite a bit, so I want to get my hands on the items as much as I can. Um, just talking about items real fast. Items do have a really helpful place, but they, just like everything else, require actions or uh, times to spend. So you do need to use them very carefully. Okay, now let's uh, try to push a little bit more into the next section. Now this is where we're going to meet uh, the opening bad boy, our boss for this dungeon, the Abligato musician, Makias. Yes, stop right there. Okay, so yeah, he's like a robot. He's like a depressed robot, I guess you could say. <laughs> And, uh, yeah, we're going to move on. And as the music picks up, we can enjoy it. Yep. All right, thanks for saving me. And let's get into it. Okay. So, Gein has finally joined the party uh, through what we had there. Uh, Gein is now available to be played. We're going to go into his stuff during our next battle. But... For now, uh, you can hear that the music changing in the background. Each zone has its own music setup. So with the music setups there, after you finish the dungeon, you'll be able to unlock the next one for a key to use when she uses her overdrive. I kind of feel that they're pretty good. Um, this is my personal preference. I kind of enjoy J-pop music. All right, so after a few scenes there, we can enter into the battle. This is a required battle. And as you can see, both of us are in. I got my dual daggers like a ninja. The full music lyrics have kicked on, which is good. And here's the next part of the battle system. So, obviously we know the basic controls here. So, let's activate our skill. Take a look. And it seems like I'm going to get hit. So, it doesn't matter what I do. So, what we can do here is activate the defense. Oh. Oops, my apologies. So for this one here, uh, we're going to start with Gein. I forgot Gein's usually faster. Gein is a shooter. He's a ranged attacker. And he has a lot of multi-hit shots. And he's got a strong piercing shot here. Now, generally you'll be using his regular attack. 
Uh, if you see a sword like that, that means it's just a basic attack and has no additional support effects. As you level up though, sometimes these skills actually unlock more. Now, I don't think I can do any counters with my main character here. Ooh, I can dodge him. Okay. We're going to do that. So that is something to note as well. Uh, depending on what your skills can do in terms of your movement, you're actually able to dodge a lot of enemy skills, which is really helpful. Okay. Now it looks like he's going to go in. Obviously, we can't do anything about this. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the defend option. And as you can see, what's going to happen is bam. The guard will come up. Attack will be automatically stopped. In some cases, this could be really, really helpful in setting up for your next attack. Bam. All right. Luckily, we dodged that first one. So that was a bit of a giddy giddy safe on that one. Okay. All right. Here we are. So we're back out to the, the main section. Just going to grab a few more of these crystals. Now, one thing to note is uh, when an enemy gets in range of you, they will chase you down. So you need to be a little careful on your distance. And we see this is shooting, so we can count out the shooting. And the uh, kind of goal here is to be able to counter, and then once they're mid in air, if we hit them, ah, I missed that one, okay. Probably should have waited a little bit more. Uh, enemies that are in mid-air actually take, uh, they're more prone to damage, so they're actually hit for criticals. Just going for the heal. Oh, I missed all that, no. There you go, anyway. So what you want to be doing basically for every battle is checking your forecasting. Um, forgot the exact term for it off the top of my head. Check your forecasting, pick the ability that counters your enemy, and then immediately hit and immediately hit them with as much as you can while they're midair. Now we got another thing there, another stigma. All right, cool. So this stigma, <coughs> as you can see here, there is a, a zero out of 20 with a star there. Every time you defeat a person, that equates to one skill point. When we get 20 skill points, that uh, kind of describe that little description at the bottom there becomes a skill that we can learn. That skill also awards the stat bonus. So our kind of um, like our energy section here, like our light, like our that section, that is going to obviously increase by 10 when we use it. But once we master this skill and put it into the passive skills, it will basically become a constant plus 10 we can always get. All right. So I'll demonstrate that when we actually go through some more battles. For now, though, I want to proceed forward here. Obviously, I want to get more items, increase the voltage as much as possible, just to be safe. Now, one thing we can do is if we can come up behind an enemy, if we hit them, we can get the green up here, which is a back attack, and that actually gets us uh, some pretty good stuff. Uh, we basically start with instant bars. And we can do some extra damage there. Okay. So as we can see there, she's going to be shooting, but it's going to be a little bit. So let's see if we can line it up with this. Okay. Now this is one of the things about the battle that the battle system that's a little bit frustrating is once a character has been locked into their action, there's no way to reverse it. So if you remember in the first game, as I mentioned, everyone takes their turn at one time and then you kind of just let it go. In this game, everyone's on their own timeline. So if I push my main character to be a little bit further, what's gonna happen is um, I may not be able to line up my shot correctly. So that's one of my little gripes because there's many times you can kind of consistently just miss the combo completely depending on what abilities you choose. All right. So I think we're at about half hour here. So let's do a, a quick break of this video here and uh, tune in for the next video coming up just a little bit. See you soon.